Greetings, fellow aliens. This is the 11th episode of Earthlings 101. Today we will learn about something that is so central to Earthlings life that they are barely ever aware of it, rituals. When you observe groups of earthlings, you sometimes see behaviors that obviously serve the purpose of feeding, reproducing, and not dying. But often you have no idea what in the universe is going on, they do things which have absolutely no practical sense, and make sounds that carry no useful information. When this happens, odds are that you are actually observing a ritual. By the way, there are as many definitions of rituals as there are anthropologists. What I describe here is what earthling anthropologists call, interaction rituals. Rituals are a bit like common tasks. When a group of earthlings has a common task to accomplish, they concentrate all together onto this task, share their mood and coordinate their actions, until the task is done. As a side effect, they earn satisfaction and an increased group spirit. Now, a ritual is actually the same thing as a common task, only without a common task. To understand rituals, we have first to understand emotions. What are emotions? An emotion is a positive or negative mental state linked to a thing, creature, action, event or idea, like a virtual hapafield or an hapafield. The four most important emotions are joy, fear, sadness and anger. I'll talk more about emotions in another episode. For now, the important thing to know is that earthlings have an emotion-driven intelligence, they try to move towards hapafields and away from unhappafields. But earthlings can't share their emotions and intentions telepathically. So, the question is, if every earthling is driven by his own emotions, how do earthlings manage to accomplish common tasks? How do they coordinate actions, and more importantly, how do they coordinate the emotions that drive those actions? The answer is what might be the single most important social mechanism on earth. Rituals. In general earthlings are not aware that they perform rituals on a daily basis. Most of them will associate the word ritual with a group of hooded men, performing some secret ceremony in a poorly lit room. But actually, rituals are omnipresent in every day's life. Earthlings greeting each other? A ritual. A social gathering, a group of musicians? Rituals. Earthlings eating together or playing a game? Also rituals. A political gathering? A sports event? All rituals. Some rituals are religious, but most are quite profane. A chat between friends? Lovebirds making sweet love? Again, rituals. Earthlings attending a funeral? A ritual. But even social activities that serve an actual purpose are kind of rituals, negotiations, transactions, and any kind of cooperative work, from daily working routine to complex and risky work projects. Actually, it's hard to find a social activity that is not a ritual. But let's go back to the hooded men in their crypt. This scene is good for explaining what happens in a ritual, not because it's a frequent event, but because earthlings think it is exemplary for rituals. So, what constitutes a ritual? To perform a ritual, we need earthlings gathering together, and separating themselves from the exterior world. The ritual usually follows predefined formalities, more or less strict rules what outfit to wear, what objects to use etc. The earthlings concentrate on the same thing and perform some predefined actions. The thing they concentrate upon becomes the center of the ritual, a sacred object. It can be an actual object, but also a person, an idea, or whatever else can be a thing. The ritual actions are usually coordinated, often rhythmic activities, like processions, chants, formulae or body movements. What matters is actually not the actions per se, but the coordination, the common focus onto the sacred object. This ritual activity helps establishing a shared emotion, devotion, joy, pain, anger, that depends on the ritual. When the ritual is successfully performed, several things happen, first, the member's feeling of belonging to this group is strengthened. In particular, the feeling for what helps or hurts the group is reinforced. In other words, the group establishes its sense of good and bad, its morality. Secondly the participants gain emotional energy, in other words, the ritual establishes a virtual hapafield of its own. But you may ask, what happens when the ritual is over? The hapafield will collapse, the group spirit will vanish, and then? Wouldn't it be great to have some keepsake of the rituals, 
something the members can take home? That's where the third effect comes in, symbols. A symbol is some kind of portable Happerfield capacitor to conserve the ritual Happerfield. It can be an actual object, a sign, an idea, a person, a word or anything else. Often, the symbol is actually the sacred object the ritual was about. It's a bit like a souvenir, those little trinkets earthlings bring back home from a voyage as a keepsake of good moments. A symbol doesn't only make happy, but also serves as a reminder for shared emotions, group spirit and group morality, till the next ritual. Because there is always a next ritual. Rituals are repeated more or less frequently, this is called ritual chains. Each group has its own ritual chains where the group reinforces its coherency, establishes its moral values and creates and charges its symbols. All rituals consist of the same components we just identified, a group of earthlings gathering together, predefined formal rules, concentration on a sacred object, shared emotions, and coordinated, often rhythmic actions. On the outcome side, we have, positive emotions, like happiness or solace, a reinforced group spirit, establishment of moral group standards, and the charging of group spirit capacitors, symbols. Modern earthlings often display their symbols on t-shirts, casual clothing they wear on the upper body. Casual means that the clothing is not required by formal dress codes of other ritual chains. As a rule of thumb, when you can put something onto a t-shirt, it's probably a symbol. By the way, in case my earthlings viewers want t-shirts with symbols from my show, I've created an online t-shirt shop. You'll find the link in the doobly-doo. Symbols don't need to be graphical. Intimate sexual relationships, for example, are built and maintained by ritual chains called romance which create all kinds of symbols, words, objects, plants, even sounds, often called, our song. Acoustical symbols are also used by large groups, like nations. National musical symbols are called anthems. Other national symbols include famous earthlings, food, drinks, clothes, historical events, words, colors, shapes and creatures. Actually, almost everything can become a national symbol. Except for, the microbes. <laughs> Tips for tourists. A concert is a strange but entertaining type of ritual. If you do what the other spectators do, you may stay unnoticed in the crowd. However, don't imitate the musicians, you might get into trouble. Let's look at a common ritual, a public ball game. Usually, games are performed in series, ritual chains. Here we have player teams and fans gathered together. The players perform a highly ritualized game which follows strict rules and requires a lot of coordination. But the fans do also coordinated, rhythmic actions, like chanting or choreographic wave movements, to express their shared emotions. For the players, the sacred object is the ball, for the fans it's rather their team. On the outcome side, we have an emotional happy field, a reinforced group spirit and often shared feelings of morality, for example against referees perceived as unfair. And to maintain these achievements after the ritual, there are the symbols, team emblems, color codes, and sometimes a trophy for the winning team. Scientific advice. The advantage of open air rituals is that they are easy to observe from high altitude. If you want to learn what happens when the ritual is disturbed, just beam a cow onto the playing field and observe the reaction. Perhaps the most common rituals are conversations. A conversation often starts with a greeting, a ritual we already encountered in episode 7. Greetings usually involve touching each other in a synchronized, even choreographic manner. The actual conversation may start with the question how are you, in order to synchronize emotions. What follows is a turn-taking exchange of sentences that may or may not carry actual information, sometimes earthlings just speak about atmospheric conditions or events everybody has already heard of. Earthlings call this small talk. The goal of small talk is not information sharing, but sharing of emotions and the activity of turn-talking speaking itself. In Great Britain and America, Gaps or overlaps between turns in a friendly conversation are typically shorter than a tenth of a second. Longer gaps are perceived as awkward, longer overlaps as unfriendly. Sometimes, conversation rituals lead to judging outsiders as immoral or awkward. This kind of conversation is called gossip. This is an example for rituals strengthening a sense of morality. In larger groups, this can grow to a public outrage against other groups, which can lead to riots and pogroms. A recent example for those hate rituals is that of public protests in France by a conservative minority, against a law that gives homosexuals the right to do something called marriage, formerly a privilege of heterosexuals. As a general rule, earthlings don't like to share their privileges. Marriage is a formal act to officialize a sexual relationship. But why is this formality so important? The answer is simple, it's a ritual. 
The marriage ritual strengthens not only the bond of the couple itself, but also admits the couple to the group of married citizens. And many members of this group don't want homosexuals in their club. An important kind of rituals is punishments, unpleasant actions imposed upon individuals that have violated the moral standards of the group. That can be a monetary penalty, imprisonment, torture, public humiliation, exile or death. The goal is not only to discourage violators, but also to ritually restitute the damaged group integrity. Earthlings call this justice. Another important type is rituals of passage, which mark earthlings' transition to a new period of life, being born, entering adulthood, graduating from school, marriage, death. Entering a social group can also be made by rituals of passage, those are called initiation rituals. Rites of passage often include physical pain, fear or another kind of suffering, from simple practical jokes up to life-threatening ordeals. That's also the reason why final exams at schools or universities are usually very stressful, even if the candidate has already proven their ability by writing a scientific paper. Exams are rites of passage. They have to hurt. Strategic advice. Conquering Earth isn't really difficult, given your technological superiority. But ruling the planet afterwards is a wholly different thing. To stay in power, you will need mass rituals and strong symbols. However, chose your symbols carefully, offensive or funny symbols may ruin your authority. This episode is mainly based upon the book Interaction Ritual Chains by Randall Collins. According to the book, rituals require bodily presence. However, I'm not sure about that. In the recent years, one could observe the rise of strong online communities which create their own group identity, group symbols and a common sense of morality, even if they never meet in person. This might indicate the existence of some online equivalent to interaction rituals, which hold those communities together. So, Earthlings use rituals for pretty much every social activity. But why? What's the purpose of rituals? I think rituals are actually a substitute for telepathy. See, like most social civilizations, Earthlings have different perceived planes of reality, the physical world, the plane of emotions, and social reality, which includes things like social status, relationships, groups, gratitude, karma etc., all those mechanisms which make up society. Actually, this is the plane where society happens. There is a fourth plane, the legal reality, a formalization of some aspects of social reality. I'll speak about this in another episode. Normally, a civilization would manage those planes via telepathy. The Etlings of Arcturus 11, for example, are driven by some kind of emotions, form groups and personal relationships, and have a virtual exchange currency, not unlike gratitude but shared within a group. Now, being emotion-driven beings, yetlings need to share emotions telepathically. Also, they use telepathy to act on the social plane. Mechanisms like this are common in the galaxy. Some alien scientists have even theorized that a society isn't possible without telepathy, because only telepathy allows the establishment and continuous synchronization of a common dynamic social reality. The common telepathic consciousness provides, so they say, the medium where the social reality happens. This sounds quite convincing, in theory, but then there is this big, annoying, paradoxical example, Earthlings. Highly social beings, which built up a complex society without any telepathy, how is this possible? The answer is simple, rituals. Symbols and rituals provide the connection between reality and other perceived planes of existence. When Earthlings want to synchronize emotions, they use rituals. When they want to act upon groups, status, gratitude, relationships etc., they do it through rituals. Even actions on the legal level require rituals. Earthling society as we know it wouldn't be possible without rituals. Of course, Earthlings don't do rituals because they are important for society, they do them because they enjoy them. And whenever Earthlings enjoy something, you can be pretty sure that it's again a scheme of our old friend, the genetic imperative. What a surprise. A note concerning my closed dad sense account. First of all, thank you all for your encouraging messages and ideas. However, I decided not to look for alternative ways to monetize my videos, except the t-shirt shop. Anyway, I don't do this for a living, this is what Earthlings call a hobby. This was the 11th episode of Earthlings 101. In the next episode we will learn about the Earthlings most important sense, vision. We will also learn why Earthlings call this yellow, although it's actually a pattern of red and green. Thanks for watching, click on like if you enjoyed the video, and as always, don't forget to be alien.